you want to see what some other numbers do that we do know about? Yeah, right. Oh, let's, let's explore the jungle a bit, because there are literally infinitely many numbers to explore, and the ones we have come across, some of them are nice. Right, first up for your consideration, I'm going to do 980460. Go, go, gadget, aliquot sequence. The numbers will spit out first, and off it plots. Right, and the reason it's stopped is it's detected that it's done a cycle of things the same. So it's hard to see on the scale, but it's actually found an amicable pair. Ah. I think it's found the pair 220 and 296. So I don't know actually whether there's a name for this. It, it's aspiring to be an amicable pair. I don't think it's called an aspiring It's number. romantic. Because <laughs> it, it likes the idea of finding a It has partner. romantic aspirations. Yeah. Right? Maybe. So, but you can notice how high this is and like the log scale, these are numbers in the sort of 10 to the power 9 sort of region and it has to chunter around up here before it comes back to numbers which we kind of recognise. So it's just nice that you can see they have to go super high and then you end up with different outcomes. Let's do another one. 2856. Still not as low as that weird one we don't know about, but 2856 feels like, you know, under 10,000. So let's see what this one does. And again, these are log scales. Oh. Why do you say oh? It's like, it's hit a mega loop. It's hit a mega loop, that's a good word for it. Although mega might imply that it's got like more than a million. It's only got 28 in that loop. Okay. Uh, some people call this the ECG graph. It looks like a sort of cardiogram heart rate thing. It's found a cycle of sociable numbers of, of length 28. Uh, which I didn't know that even existed, but this aliquot sequence is tapped into it, and so it has to go quite high into the uh, 10 to the 6 sort of area, and then it starts <laughs> going around the mega loop, as you call it. Here's a question. Yeah. What's the biggest sociable loop they know? The, the, so now we're into a lot of open questions, but I think loops of any size are out there, or, or loops of unbounded size. There are some loops which don't exist. I don't think there's a three cycle. Hey, but these are things I'm quoting without checking, if you want to go and check a good web page for this, the aliquot.de is a fairly sort of low budget but really brilliant resource for people who are exploring this and they're keeping the latest research coming out for which ones have they settled. The Lame of Five are still not settled, but there's a bunch of other stuff that people are running on computers at home and you could do the same if you write your own basic Python script, better than mine would be a good idea, and you could check. I'm sure there are efficient ways of doing the really large numbers that I haven't bothered to implement. I'm imagining this moment that someone's checking one of those lame of fives and suddenly it drops and hits one and it's like Jodie Foster hearing the... Hearing that know, thing in contact, yeah. Yeah, 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 detecting the rhythm of the universe. And, and like, oh my goodness, I need yeah. to call someone and tell them. It has that, that feel about it. It's like digging into these irrational numbers, but it, this is just number theory. This is like properties of numbers which we didn't put there. And this is why like, some people are bound to ask, rightly so, what's the point? Why explore this stuff? And I think there is no reason other than it's there to explore. And if you, if you don't get a tiny glimpse of the romance of just, I want to know, because it's there, and I didn't put it there, and none of us put it there, but it has these properties. And I think it's worth remembering that that's what number theory always is, and it's only ever really done because we're curious as human beings. It does turn out number theory to be pretty useful from time to time. Let's do internet security cliche again, prime numbers, factorizing them is hard, and that's how we keep things secure. But that's not why we do this stuff. If you're this far into a number file video about <laughs> aliquot numbers and you're asking what's the point, you're definitely watching the wrong channel. There's a lot more to research and I, I guarantee uh, that you'll have a fun time. If you've enjoyed this introduction, go and read some of the websites that are out there and see what research is being done right now about this stuff. All right. As a piece de resistance, Brady, I thought I'd write a Python script to do all of them. And when I say all of them, I don't mean all of the numbers, but let's say like up to 500. Because actually most of the numbers you check drop to one quickly and the ones that are difficult like 138 like take a bit of computing power and 276 is going to fail but as long as I put a cap on like stop looking now we should be able to just do a whole swathe of them and I could plot all of them for you if you want to see that. Bring it on. Of course. <laughs> we'll, we'll plot them all. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time and you'll see all the numbers track through so here we go. These are all the aliquot sequences. Anytime you see a long one um, you've, you've got an interesting number. It's up to 230. Right 276 is just on the screen. We're expecting a pause. It gave up. It's now carrying on. My code is pretty efficient, if I do say so myself. It's, it gets stuck a few times though, and you see some long sequences in here, but hopefully we'll see a graph of all of these, and I'm going to plot them on a log scale. We'll see some of the lame of five turn up, and they'll be like unbounded ones. Here we go. And you, all these things are where sequences end in a, in a finite number of steps, so there's like some sequences join up, and the, these ones, like you've got these parallel lines, I think that's the 138 
and ones like it that tap into the same sequence, and we're expecting them to end eventually. But they go quite high. And there's a few other things that while it's animating through, you might want to speculate about what are you seeing here. I think I've only let it go up to about 150 terms. I was lying. Clearly longer than 150 terms. <laughs> That's parallel one's crashed. Yeah, so that's the 138 and, the, and its family mm. that tap into the same sequence. All of them go super high, but actually they're, they're doing the same pattern. There's two parallel branches going up looking like quite similar. That's 276 and like the other one I said that goes with it. There's a couple of the other Lama 5 in here, I think 552 and 560. And you can see some other things. So the perfect number down here. Another perfect number here, we've got some amicable pairs, in fact both of them, the 220 and 296 are in there, that nice zigzaggy pattern. And I think that's 496, another perfect here. But I really like this graph as a sort of summary of all the stuff we've been chatting about, because you can see some of the expected behaviour with familiar words like perfect, and these ones that we just don't know about. And it feels like we're not even close to knowing about, we just don't know how to check as far as we need to check. Maybe they come back down, and maybe they don't. Oh, I'm beginning to think maybe they don't. So the Catalan-Dixon conjecture is that everything goes to one, or gets in a loop with a perfect number or a sociable group. But the, the counter conjecture, Guy and Selfridge now have put out there, which is they believe that there are unbounded sequences. And they reckon they found heuristic evidence. that It's not a proof, and they are the first to admit that. But they found lots of evidence that even if you keep checking, it seems less and less likely that we will be able to prove they all come back to one. That's their claim at the moment. I don't think it's been solved, and this current number theory research, as far as I'm aware. I'm out of my depth at this stage, uh, but that's a nice feeling for an amateur mathematician to sort of some, find this low-hanging fruit that gets you into deep water quite quickly. And if number four viewers want to go and play with aliquot sequences, I recommend it. I've enjoyed it. Well, what I enjoyed about doing aliquot sequences, I learned some new terms which I feel like I should have known. One of them is an untouchable number, which I'd not come across, but is only defined in this context. So an untouchable number is apparently a number that will never ever be in an aliquot sequence, ever. For example, 5, I believe has been proven, it will never turn up in any aliquot sequence. So all those lines we saw bouncing around, it's never going to hit 5. Yeah. What we don't know, well, at the moment, 5 is the only untouchable number we found, which is odd. All of the others are even. So unsolved conjecture number 2 of this video is 5, the only odd untouchable number. Require, convinced that if you have a Mersenne prime, 2 to the n minus 1, and you then multiply that by 2 to the n minus 1, you always, always, always get a perfect number. And then they will go home, and I will say, well, how do we know it works? How do we know that's always going to work? We, ha we haven't proven that.